We've all heard it. Prune the suckers on your tomatoes. Now, if you are new to this, you're probably wondering, does my plant need a haircut or does it need therapy? Well, in today's video, we're gonna look at the science behind whether or not you should prune your suckers from a plant perspective, from a human perspective. I'm very bad at that judgment call, so please do not, don't take that advice from me. Is not, I'm not good at it. For anyone new to gardening, you probably don't even know what a sucker is. Now, a sucker is a small stem that grows in the V-notch between the leaf and the main stem itself. Now, if we leave these behind, we end up with an incredibly overgrown tomato plant, but a tomato plant with commitment issues to actually making fruits and vegetables and that sort of thing. In some cases, not in all, not in all cases. So that's another part we're gonna talk about here. So the benefits to pruning suckers is a reduction in disease because it does help increase the airflow in and between the branches. It also helps encourage ripening of the tomatoes that are on the plant. And the reason for that is because it causes stress to the plant and it thinks, okay, we need to speed things up so we can reproduce. So it will help with the maturity of any existing fruits that are there. And this was actually backed up by a very recent science 2023 there was a study done by the University of Maryland and what it showed was that reducing the plant to two to three main stems meaning all the suckers were removed except for the main stem was left behind and then two alternatives lower at the base were left behind resulted in between 10 and 14 days so one to two weeks earlier harvest or ripening of the fruit. And that can be a make it or break it in a colder climate like where we are. But in a warmer climate, it probably doesn't matter that much. Unless of course you're running into some extreme heat issues and then maybe it does matter as well. So it's kind of like cleaning out your closet. You look at your clothes in your closet and you think, I might need that blazer from 2008 one day because fashion comes back. But the question becomes, should you keep that blazer? And in this case, the question becomes, yes, you can have 30 more tomatoes than you were used to having, but is it worth running the clock on frost to ensure you get it? Uh, that decision's up to you. Now, if you're enjoying the journey through tomato psychology, please do hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the science behind tomatoes and plants in general. So here's the drawbacks to actually removing tomato suckers. Number one is that it does reduce the volume of fruit you get. So when you remove the suckers, the fruits you get will be larger. So single fruits will be larger. And this may be beneficial to someone who needs to can or make pasta sauce. It is a lot easier just to remove the skin from one giant tomato rather than all these little tiny tomatoes. But if you are going for like fresh eats, for salads, that sort of thing, then the opposite may be true. You want just sheer volume. And so therefore leaving those suckers in place is what's going to truly benefit you. Rootkers researchers actually showed that heirloom varieties, specifically of tomatoes, when they had the suckers removed, drastically decreased the volume of fruits that were produced. So if you have an heirloom tomato, not an F1 hybrid, for example, then that may be the reason why you leave the suckers in place because you will just overall reduce your yields regardless of the tomato size. So besides the suckers, there also are things called sun leaves. So these sun leaves actually reduce sun scalding and it doesn't just reduce the sun scalding on the surrounding leaves, but it actually reduces the sun scalding on the tomatoes themselves. It also actually helps to reduce the heat that the flowers and the rest of the plant is being exposed to, which if you watch my video on five pro tips for July gardening, you know that heat and sun is actually a huge determining factor in reducing the overall yields that you end up with. So the sun leaves you typically want to leave in place. The only time you want to remove the sun leaf is if they are near the base of the plant to help increase the airflow between the junction of the soil or the mulch and the plant itself. And then the other time you would remove a sun leaf is if it is on the back end, so the non-sunny side of a plot that is filled with tomatoes and the leaves are beginning to kind of rub or interact with each other, you want to try to get rid of that junction because that rubbing 
obviously is a little bug highway for disease and pests to move through. But the rubbing, depending on how severe it can be, um, particularly in my setup where I have like just a string trellising them, not something rigid in structure, that rubbing can and will actually remove some of the top layer of your leaves in your stem, which exposes that plant more to, again, disease and pests and that sort of thing. Okay, so this one is actually very specific to cold climate gardeners and cold climate gardeners only. Unless, of course, you just want things to be sped up in your garden, then you can do it in warm climates as well. But two to three weeks before your first frost date, so for me, it's like September 13th, meaning middle of August, end of August, it is in your best interest to top the top of the plant. So what you want to do is go to the highest growth point on the plant and actually remove it. And this will force the plant to put energy, auxins and cytokinins, into the production of the seeds rather in, than into the apical meristem that is the leading edge of your plant. So that redistribution of hormone is actually what is beneficial in this case. So ultimately speaking, if you have heirloom tomatoes or you don't care necessarily about the size of the tomato, leave your suckers in place. Unless of course you have disease issues, then you may want to remove some of those suckers and some of those sun leaves with it. Now, if your goal is just solely larger, fewer tomatoes, but larger in size, then you want to remove those suckers and only leave between three, two to three stems in place. So the main stem plus one or two suckers from the base. Overall, regardless of it, whether it's an heirloom tomato, a regular F1 hybrid, you name it, or whether you want small tomatoes or big tomatoes, you always want to remove the leaves, suckers, anything that is in the lower portions of the plant soil interface. So I would probably go up like half a foot, particularly when they get a bit bigger. We wanna remove any dead or dying debris, whether it's dead or dying because it's old or dead and dying because of lack of fertilizer and or dead or dying because of disease or mechanical manipulation gone wrong. We want to remove that because that will help reduce the introduction of pests and disease. And the sun leaves leave in place whenever possible. It seems hypothetically good to get rid of at the beginning, but the reality is it reduces the exposure of the flowers to heat, which is really important because too much heat will actually reduce the pollen present in those tomato flowers. And then furthermore, it's going to reduce the sun scalding that may be present on your tomatoes specifically, which is never nice. With that being said, Geek Crew, what are your thoughts on pruning? Do you do it? Do you not? And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.